you can see the breakout box right I'll what I'll do is I'll quickly try to communicate with my uh, scan tool and you'll see uh, some flashing light on this um, breakout box okay I don't know how good the camera is picking that up but uh, what I have to do here is you need to hit some communication with the OBD uh, sorry the scan tool sometimes they don't like to talk to you on the older system until you hit a command and you can see my number seven the blue light is flashing if you guys can pick that up all I did is just went into the scan tool and trying to communicate with engine computer and you can see my blue light is flashing there there you go okay so that's one way to tell if the communication is happening so now we know the communication is happening on number seven pin okay number seven usually is a k line communication that's what they call it a lot of older gm vehicle used to use that right around 2000 you know early 2000 gm vehicle number seven is a k line communication it's zero 12 volt k line communication okay so now we know how um it is communicated so on the obd plug you can have you know depending on the networking system they're using in the car you could have communication coming on pin 7 sometime pin 2 sometime pin uh, 4 um, sorry CAN bus is on 6 and 14 I believe I could be wrong I need to double check 6 and 14 and pin 15 16 is always going to be 16 is always going to be power supply and pin 4 and 5 I believe is going to be ground you can see uh, there's a CAN bus, there's a K line, there's an L line, you got J1850, we got LIN bus, Flexray, Most, Ethernet. These are the pretty much the most common and pretty much overall um, everything that they use on automotive. Okay, right at the top here, guys, right? Um, So this is my OBD2 plug, right? Right here, OBD2 plug. And the OBD2 plug, this is universal, okay? So this is the um, compliance, the automotive, um, you know, association or whatever you want to call it, organization. They have uh, clearly made this rule for the car manufacturer, manufacturers to have this communication line on the certain pin on the OBD plug like that, okay? So in every car, you'll have the same exact pin for the communication. Now pin two and has the J1850 bus. Pin 10 will have J1850 bus negative. Pin four and five is uh, my chassis and signal ground. Pin 16 is going to be my, always going to be my positive 12 volt, right? And you got pin seven, which is the K line we got pin 15 is going to be L line, pin 14 going to be my CAN bus low and pin 6 going to be my CAN bus high. If the manufacturer choose to use the other missing, see there's few missing um, pins here, they can use that to use for other communication. The car may have two maybe three communication lines coming into the obd plug that's very possible as well and they can choose to use that use those extra pin for other types of communication as well okay so basically this is this rule this compliance is they set there for the scan tool to talk to the car so the automotive association organization wants manufacturer to make the obd plug there so our scan tool as a technician or whoever needs to use the OBD plug to get into the car data and all that, so they can get into it. Uh, that's why the, the rule and compliance is there. Okay, they got the name here. You can see ISO 9141, uh, SAEJ 1850, you know. Um, you got ISO 5765. That's just the name for the rules, the compliance uh, yeah, that they set uh, for the manufacturer. So don't worry about the numbers, reading and remembering those numbers. We don't really care. All you need to know is CAN bus, is it a LIN bus, is it a K, um, K line, uh, you know, 
Uh, that's all you got to remember here. Okay. Now I'm going back to here and then let's go to my K line, which is in this car we are working on today is the K line system, right? So that's what we saw on the K line. You see 12 to 0 volt, around 10 to 12 volt signal, okay? It's a square wave signal. You can see down here, it's not very zoomed out, but it is a square wave. If you zoom it out, a longer time base, you'll see a square wave like we saw on the, I don't think I have this saved on the scope here, but that's what we saw on this vehicle we're working on today, the K-line communication, which, which is coming on my K-line is pin number seven right here. You can see up there, it says K-line, right? So that's what we're dealing with today on this GM. And it says from 2000 to 2004, Asian, European, USA, you know, most manufacturers used to use that K-line. Not only that, they still using K-line till today as well on, you know, a vehicle uh, for not very important modules, not very important, not very fast, um, you know, signal system, okay? Um, okay, now... We got, it's got a slow communication. K-line is a very, very slow communication. It's 10 kilobits per second. So that's the maximum speed they're going to run on. So 10 kilobits of data they can transfer on K-line, which is just one wire system, which we saw. So basically all you do is put your connector on pin 7, right? Your scope or, uh, you know, meter, and then uh, ground, right? And you're going to see that signal like this that's what we saw today so this every packets of data is the you know uh, communication happening so like we saw as well we need uh, most of the time we need the scan tool to send a ping you know to get the receive the data back otherwise module will not talk to you and you might not see any um, any uh, signal on your scope uh, until your scan tool actually wants to receive the data. So that's always a good tip to know that. Okay, that is K-Line. It's early 2000s sort of vehicle, Asian, European, USA, everything. So K-Line, we also got the very older generation, you know, uh, GM cars. They use VPW, which is variable pulse width, J1850. And this is going to have a 6 to 7 volts, almost square wave, like this example I'm showing you under here. This is what the communication is going to look like on an older GM type vehicles, okay? Um, and its maximum speed on this uh, communication line is 10 kilobytes per second as well. And it's one wire, um, one wire, and it's on OBD pin 2. You're going to find the communication on OBD pin 2. Okay, right there. So that is called J1850 VPW communication. All right. So it's right here. It says 6 to 7 volt, almost square. Okay, almost square. It's not very, very square, like a square wave, but it's almost square wave. That's what it's going to look like. Then we also got J1850 PWM, pulse width modulation type uh, signal uh, network here. So this is actually two wire, two wire system on the same number two and number 10. So on VPW, they only use number two pin, but on the PWM, they use two and 10. Okay, and the two and 10, you're gonna have a high, obviously positive and the negative low side, right? So the high size side is going to go from zero volt to four and a half volt roughly it's a square wave and they're going to have a mirror image like a can bus would do mirror image on the high and the low so the high voltage is going to go from zero to four and a half volt and the low voltage is going to go from five volt down to about 0.5 volt okay so this is what the signal is going to look like okay this is this is not very zoomed out but one you can see from 5 volt right here is going down so this is going to be your low 5 to 0.5 okay low signal on that pwm network 
and this one's going from zero up towards four, four and a half, five volt there. Okay, that's going to your high signal. So it's exactly like the CAN bus, but much slower. The maximum speed on them is 40 kilobytes per second. And not always the case, but possibly they're gonna have a twisted wire. Two communication wire gonna be twisted, um, like the CAN bus system. And it's used on older Ford cars. So VPW is for old GM vehicles and PWM is for old Ford vehicles. Okay, so this is what the VPW, PWM, the, and the K line is going to look like. So now we covered the pin 2, pin 10. We also covered the pin 7, which is the K line, right? Now let's move on to L line. Sometimes they also use L line, right? So L line, you're going to find it on pin 15. Okay, so L line is to turn the module on, module turn on signal, it says. Okay, it's optional. Not always they're going to use it. Sometimes they can use it uh, on automotive, right? And it's a unidirectional. So they can only, uh, you know, uh, transfer data one way only. They can't send and receive. They can only send or receive okay they cannot there's a unidirectional whereas the K line and every other uh, network we talked about they can receive and send okay so two ways um, but the L line is unidirectional means only one way the data can travel okay now the maximum speed on that is 200 kilobytes per second it's a one wire system single wire system and most of the time they used to download software to the vehicle's ECU at high speed rate during system initialization. So, so what he's saying is the manufacturer can use that communication line to maybe do the software programming and all that on the ECU. Okay, they're not really, really for a vehicle communication. It's kind of, it is. Uh, but it's not like K line where all the modules can talk to each other, receive and send data. Okay, L line most of the time purely used from for manufacturer to download and upload data and whatnot. Okay, so that's what you're gonna find on pin 15. Okay, now let's move on to CAN bus. So you can see I have a little bit more on the CAN bus. The CAN bus is a very very common. Um, network type they use on automotive lately right uh, anywhere from 2007 8 and up most vehicle will have CAN bus system right and they can be arranged in parallel or series arrangement um, and CAN bus as you probably already know this is very common so a lot of people do know about the CAN bus they can go from high you know, they can have a high and low, obviously, on the pin you can see. The high is on pin 6 and the low signal is on pin 14, right? The high signal will go from 2.5 volt to 3.5 volt and the low signal will go from 2.5 down to 1.5 volt, like you can see on the example here. So 2.5, 3.5 to 2.5, right? So it goes from 2.5 upwards 3.5 square web right and on the low side you can see it goes from two and a half down to about one and a half so this is high and this is the low signal on CAN bus and they are mirror each other so they, the high is going to look exactly like the low uh, just like looking in the mirror okay and they usually are the two twisted wires the CAN bus wires usually are twisted together okay that's what you're going to see. Parallel and series arrangement. So what that means, before I jump into, uh, jump into it, let's just talk about 120 ohm terminal resistors too. So what that means is CAN bus going to have two terminating resistors, right? So on pin 6 and pin 14, where the high and low on the OBD plug is, if you put you know, ohm meter to check the resistance, right? You're going to see 60 ohm there. So that usually means the circuit is complete, right? So that's a quick way to sort of check, okay, if everything is intact in the circuit, 
right? So the end of the transmission of the data line going to have 120 ohm terminal register 2 and they are on parallel circuit meaning you're going to see 60 ohm when you check on pin 6 and 14. Okay, now let's move on to parallel and series arrangement. Um, before that, I'll quickly show you this picture right here on the corner. So this is just a zoom out view of this um, signal, high and low. You can see going from 2.5 volt to 3.5 volt high and then 2.5 to 1.5 volt low. They just mirror each other, exactly same looking on high and low. Okay, and some cars you'll see the CAN bus. This is a CAN bus high and low, but at the end of every data packet, right, you'll see this high spike. Sometimes you can get be mistaken saying, okay, there is an issue here, this high spike, but that's completely okay. This is just like a full stop after the sentence. So meaning this is one packet of data full stop. So that's pretty normal on some cars if you see that high spike at the end of the data packet okay now um, the high speed on this one goes one me megabytes per second that's the maximum speed of data transfer on CAN bus system on the low speed 100 kilobytes per second okay so what that means is on a CAN bus system they can have high and low speed as well okay so a lot of the GM car uses high speed and the low speed CAN bus. So they could have a different rate of data transfer as well. Okay, let's talk about the parallel and the series arrangement. So what I mean by that is how they put the modules together in the circuit. Okay, that's what it means. All right, I'm just going to show you quickly on the board. So parallel... On a parallel circuit, let's say this is your high and this is your low, right? So this is your high and this is your low, CAN bus high and low, right? So what they can do is they can use a parallel, uh, parallel uh, arrangement. So this is one module, let's say, let's call it an ECU. So they can add another module here, right? Let's call it a TCM. They can add another module there, right? Let's call it an ABS. Okay, this is a parallel arrangement on the CAN bus system. Okay, now on a series arrangement, excuse me. And the series arrangement, what they do is, let's say this is your high and low, right? Um, okay, this is, let's say, one module, ECU, right? ECU. What they're going to have is they're going to have two high and low wires going in and two high and low wires coming out okay let's say this is your another module abs okay and you can continue down the line so let's call it a tcm here okay you can keep going here let's call it a airbag srs okay so this is the series arrangement okay now when it comes to diagnosis okay this can make a huge difference okay and i'll show you why it can make a huge difference when it comes to diagnosis let's say you don't have a communication on this system let's add one more uh, module here anyway let's add a, uh, a srs let's add one more module here again you got a uh, let's go TCM okay so if you got a no communication issue with the ABS let's say your ABS has no communication in this case right everything else will still talk to your scan tool you can have scan tool talking communicating with your ECU 
A back, teach him everything. If all the communication line, everything is good. If the ABS module has a problem, you can still talk to everything else. Okay, now on series design, let's say if your ABS is bad, okay, you, when you hook up the scan tool, you can talk to ECU, you cannot talk to ABS because ABS is bad, and you can't talk to TCM and you cannot talk to airbag module because after the broken module, the damaged module without communication, you're not going to have any communication in any other, other module after that. So when you look at the wiring diagram, you can sort of tell, okay, I don't have communication with three modules here, which one is the problem? A lot of the time you go down the line from the OBD plug and then see which ones is you know, uh, communicating, which one is not communicating, and find the module that is not communicating, and everything else after that, you'll have no communication. That way you know, okay, maybe the ABS is the problem here, because I can't communicate after that. Now, I have seen some arrangement where, even if the system is like this, internally, they wire the communication line differently. So even if you see four wires going into, let's say two going in, two coming out, even if you got two wires going in, four wires going into it, you have a broken module, you can still talk to other modules though. Okay, there is arrangements like that as well when it comes to networking. Okay, All right, that's your CAN bus system. All right, let's move on to your LIN bus. So LIN bus, is pretty much similar to K-Line. If you look at the LIN bus signal right here on the corner here, I have got an example. From battery voltage, almost just above zero volt square wave signal, right? It almost looks like my K-Line signal. There's not much different there when it comes to signal, okay? So LIN bus is local interconnect network. Um, and it's about 12 to about 0, 1 volt signal, almost similar to K-Line, right? Now the difference between K-Line and LIN bus is, LIN bus is usually used for the output to operate something. K-Line is more like the networking only, receiving and sending data out, but LIN bus is more like it's got a function to do, it's got output to produce, right? So that's what they use k uh, LIN bus for, and a lot of the time it's only one wire, 20 kilobytes per second speed, and it's similar to K-Line, in one wire, K-Line, yes. so LIN bus, you're not going to find it on OBD plug, however, LIN bus is internal networking, okay, it's not for our scan tool communication, so you might not, you're not going to find it on the OBD2 plug, so LIN bus happens within the network, and what I said is it's got a job to do, an output to produce. I'll give you an example. So on a HP AC, your heating and ventilation AC system, your mirror, your windows, door, seat control, they use this uh, LIN bus system to operate those components, multiple components in, in housed in one unit a lot of the time. Um, you know, uh, using LIN bus system, okay? So Linbus is going to have a master and a slave module, okay? Master and a slave module. So basically the master is going to tell the slave what to do, okay? That's how a Linbus system works, okay? Uh, just to give you an example uh, on Linbus system, let's go onto the board here real quick. So you're going to have a master, let's call this a master, right? And you're going to have a slave. Let's call this is a slave module, right? So let's give you an example of a side door mirror, okay? On the side door mirror, on a lot of the vehicle, you'll see many um, components in that one housing, right? So you got the, obviously, mirror has to be tilted up and down, left and right. So you got probably one or two more to do that. You also got the folding. When the car turns off or on, the mirror comes in, you know, falls back into the glass, uh, your window, and falls back out. So there's your another motor there, right? You also have an indicator, side indicators. Uh, sometimes it's on the mirror itself, uh, side mirror itself. Uh, you also got uh, some car has 
uh, cameras on them probably. Some car has a uh, heater uh, on a cold weather, you know, maybe uh, where the, the temperature can get really, really low, they will have a heater in the mirror to de defrog, um, you know, the mirror, right? So you got many components in that one mirror, right? So to operate all those components, including motor, heater, uh, you got indicators, everything, right? You're going to need a bunch of wires going into it to control all the things that you want to do, right, on that mirror. Uh, so it's going to get very messy. A lot of wirings and everything has to go through the door and up into the mirror. So what they come up with is the lean bus. So this is how they're going to operate. It's going to be less wire, but they can operate everything uh, on that mirror. So let's call this is a mirror right so this is a mirror side mirror and this is your master so let's say a body control module it could be any module how they want to arrange it but let's call it a body control module so the body control module bcm is the master it's going to tell the slave what to do so where does the bcm is going to get the signal from maybe sometimes automatically right uh, sometimes uh, the driver has to press some button on the door to fold the mirror in and out or tilt the mirror up and down, whatever. Indicator on, you got to turn the indicator on. So all that signal, the manual physical buttons you're pressing, the signal is going to go to BCM. Right? BCM is going to get the driver's signal, driver's you know, command, whatever driver wants to do. And the BCM is going to send a signal to the mirror, let's say one wire, Limbus is a one wire system, it's a very slow uh, data transfer, slow network, they don't need it very fast because it's not a very critical um, component that it has to be on like that, like very, very quickly or, you know, uh, not very, very important safety stuff here. So they can have slow network to run those type of components. So this is a Limbus, L-I-N. Local interconnect network, right? Lin bus. And we say it's got square web. You know, 12 Jira volt square web. You're going to see something like that, right? Um, something like that, anyway. Um, so, what BCM is going to do is it's going to send different types of signal for different job. Okay, so if BCM wants mirror to turn the indicator on on the mirror it's going to send a certain type of signal so if bcm wants to uh, mirror to you know tilt the window up it's going to send a different type of signal okay you can probably because it's a slow signal so you can probably see that on the scope if you put it in and you can sort of tell the different okay this is the signal for this this is the signal for that job but it's not important as long as the signal is getting there we don't care, our diagnosis is done, okay? If the signal is getting there, but the mirror is refusing to function, more than likely the mirror is faulty. We can't just replace one component in the mirror most of the time, so you probably buy the whole thing, right? Now, BCM is a master, <coughs> excuse me, module. The slide mirror is the slide module. So not only that, they're gonna also have a little module in there, little computer. Let's call it uh, some module, right? Uh, module there to do all that okay because the sending signal is not gonna be enough it's gonna have its own module to actually do what it's supposed to do so the module might have wires going to the indicator we might have a wires going into the uh, motor for the tilting you might have a heater right so internally they're gonna be connected to different circuits but externally we're gonna have a lean bus and we're gonna have powers and ground okay so from the fuse maybe the power is going to come in 12 volt maybe the earth okay you might have an earth coming in because you need powers and earth to operate all that components in there so limbus is not going to carry power on earth right so limbus is just a command so you got the powers and ground all the time there permanently and the bcm is sending signal to do uh, whatever it needs to do like command which is our lean bus signal right here and this module the slide module gonna do whatever the bcm wants it to do simple as that so when it comes to diagnosis all you do is check your power check your ground obviously and check if there's a signal coming in when you turn the indicator on press the button for the mirror whatever you're doing on that mirror 
make sure there is a signal going into the mirror. If you see power, earth and signal, you're done. The mirror is bad, maybe the module is bad, whatever the case, you know, you probably have to buy the whole complete mirror anyway. Okay, so that's how the Linbus system works. So basically, let's say I got a, you know, person standing there. Let's call this another person. This is, this is a person, this is another person programmed to do what I tell him to do, tell this person to do, right? So let's say I'm going to tap once and this is going to do, turn the lights on for me. If I'm going to tap twice like this, this is going to turn the motor on for me. If I tap it three times, maybe this is going to turn the heater on for me. So whatever is programmed in this robot, let's say it's a robot, right? It's programmed to know one tap means do this. Second tap means turn the, uh, this component on. Third tap means turn this component on, okay? Basically, that's what, I'm, what it's doing. So I'm the master, the robot is the slave, and the tap is the lean bus, okay? So one tap lean bus means, okay, turn the indicator on. And the slave robot here is going to turn the indicator on for me. Now I've tapped it three times, uh, the robot knows, okay, it's time to turn the motor on for the window tilting, whatever the case is, okay? That's what lean bus is. And like I said, it doesn't come to the OBD plug, okay? It's internal. So it's an internal network. It's not really for scan tool communication. It's internal. And sometimes the slave module, let's say, in this case, the mirror has a computer a module, whatever, right? The slave module, you're not going to see that on the scan tool either sometimes, okay? You will see the BCM on the scan tool. You can read, communicate, whatever. And you can do all the BCM stuff in the scan tool, but you might not even show up. This module might never communicate with your scan tool and you'll never see that module on the list. Okay, that is very possible as well. Because it's internal networking, not for scan tool. Okay, uh, Prasanna says if you do Arduino, um, I think I've heard about that, some kind of device uh, system. You can easily understand about COM protocols. Yeah, I know. I don't need to get into too details, Prasanna. As a technician, we don't need to get into too much detail. As long as we know what the signal looks like, what the voltage level should be, and what it does, that's all it matters to us as a technician. We don't need to get into the details, how they built it, what they're going to do, none of that. So thank you for that comment, but uh, yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one here. All right, so next one down the line here, we got flex ray. Okay, let's talk about the flex ray. Flex ray is another system of networking in the vehicle they have been using, excuse me, for a while. Uh, but you probably see this on a lot of high end vehicles. It's slowly coming to the mainstream, but I think they usually use on high end sort of uh, luxury cars at the moment, uh, right? So Flexray basically is pretty similar to CAN bus again. It's got two wires, right? And uh, they mirror each other. So the high sort of goes from 2.5 volt to 2.9 volt to 2.1 volt. So what I mean by that is it's going to have three voltage level here. So basically 2.5 is the is a basic base point, right? So it can go up to 2.9 volt and it can also come down to about 2.1, 2.2 volt. Uh, and then you saw, see the messages here, communication, and it goes back to 2.5 volt. So you can have three different voltage level here on flex ray compared to CAN bus. CAN bus only got two voltage level, right? Flex ray gonna have three voltage level, okay? Same thing, mirror image on the low side, which is going to be 2.5 to 2.1 to 2.9. So that's what the flex ray is. It's pretty similar to CAN bus, but a little bit of difference on voltage there. Uh, and it's a very, very fast signal, much more faster than CAN bus, okay? Some of the new technology, some of the new uh, components they use on vehicles, maybe ADAS system, maybe, you know, other uh, traction control, whatever the safety related and, and, and you know, very fast uh, components in the vehicle, they probably use the flex ray. 
and they can use the flex ray and CAN bus at the same time. Okay, on the same vehicle, you'll find two different networks uh, as well. So they'll use the CAN bus for a little bit, not very fast uh, communication for some modules, and then they'll use the flex ray for some special high speed uh, uh, components uh, and system. Okay, uh, that's what flex ray is. Um, and it's got the maximum speed of 10, 10 megabytes per second, let's say, compared to uh, we have high speed, one megabytes for CAN bus, maximum speed, and we got 10 megabytes per second for FlexRay. So that's what FlexRay will look like, okay. Uh, now let's jump into the most. Okay, the most, I don't have too much here. I've never really uh, worked on it. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know what the signal look like. I've seen a few examples, but until I've got my hands on it and experience it, I'm not going to, you know, um, give out false information. So I'm not going to talk about it too much on most. So the most means media oriented system transport. Okay, that's the full form of most. The most is usually used just for the media. So your radio, maybe navigation, uh, you know, all that center um, display and center controls in the car, like your AC maybe, uh, all that included in that media, okay, media unit. So usually they use that uh, most system for networking there. So give you sort of example uh, on most is So let's say on a system you have, um, let's say you have uh, radio, right? On the radio you're going to have the panel where you can press the buttons and turn the volume up and down and change the modes, audio, go to FM, whatever. So that button, the touch screen or you know whatever you want to call it. Let's say in this case the touch screen or, or buttons, right? Those control panel okay let's say control panel and then you're gonna have what maybe speakers maybe amplifier so you're gonna have an amplifier let's say module or speaker module whatever you want to call it you might have uh, you might have a screen right the, the things that's gonna display on the screen um, whatever you're doing let's say if you're pressing the button on the display you can see if you're pressing the volume button the volume bars may be coming down or going up something like that so this is the display let's say and uh, then you're going to have let's say uh, the actual main media let's say cd player or whatever you want to call it the cd player right so there's going to have multiple components on that radio alone right it looks like one unit but they're going to have multiple different modules attached to that one you need to make everything work right so what they're going to have is they're going to have this all connected via a networking system obviously right so they need to talk to each other to work efficiently so everything is connected here if you press something on the control panel the display has to show such thing uh, the CD players may have to do its thing and the speakers may have to do its thing right so they all connect it so this is what the most means okay this is the networking system on most it could be uh, you know fiber optical fiber uh, it could be just a uh, copper wires you know whatever however they do it I'm not very familiar with it and I don't think we need to that much worry about this more system and the reason why I think we don't need to worry about it is because this is all internal anyway okay so this is all internal so if there's a problem with the radio the radio is not working or whatever's happening in the radio if you want to replace you probably replace the whole thing anyway because you're not going to buy one individual component they're not going to sell it to you the dealers might sell you the whole thing right so there's no reason how they are talking to each other internally is there so that's why it's not very important, we just need to know what it is, but I don't think we'll ever even test it. We're not going to break into the radio and, and test that circuit. It could be physical circuit, it could be connected on the, uh, you know, circuit board. They're not, they might not have a physical wiring, 
Okay, so how are you going to test that? Are we not engineers? We don't know that. So if there's a problem, maybe send the radio wave to the engineers to test it out. Okay, so that's most. Now, if the scan tool need to talk to the most, uh, talk to this, you know, infotainment or media computer, then they might have a actually CAN bus network going into you know, other module. So if it's connected to, let's say, ECU or BCM, it might have a CAN bus going out anyway. So within the media infotainment system, they use the most. But outside of that, I don't think they use it anyway. So uh, we can do all our communication testing here on the CAN bus anyway, rest inside the media entertainment system, we don't care and we don't probably need to know what, how to check this uh, network anyway. So this is, this is my take on the most. That's why I don't have too much on the most uh, on that uh, picture I'm showing you. Uh, let's talk about the Ethernet, okay? So this is the Ethernet, DOIP, Diagnostic Over IP it's called. So DOIP. So this is getting a little bit popular on a lot of uh, you know, high-end luxury cars as well, expensive cars. So again, I don't have too much information in it. I haven't really you know, dealt with this type of uh, networking issues on the vehicle so far. So I don't have the full explanation on how it works and what it does and what not. But I'll give you a short brief explanation. So Ethernet is like home internet how the home internet networking works. Pretty much it works the same on the car as well. A DOIP is a diagnostic over IP, so Ethernet. Now, if you heard about, uh, let's say, down here on the picture, you can see you've got three cars. We've got computer, we've got the uh, tower here, internet tower maybe, computer here, whatever, right? So what is this showing you is how the Ethernet is used in the automotive these days. So let's say if you got, uh, if you're working at the dealer, dealership, let's say you're working on a BMW dealership and you got a recall or from the BMW saying, okay, we need to re, re, uh, you know, update the software on the issue on this particular BMW models. So it's a dealer, right? So you might get many same cars to do the updates. They might have thousands of cars to do the updates, right? What they can do is they can book all the cars, let's say 10 cars that day, that needs exact same or, you know, uh, software upload, up, update or whatnot. And then they can put them in line at the parking lot, doesn't even need to come to the shop. And they can, from their desk, you know, from their table uh, workshop, they can update all 10 cars at the same time using the Ethernet, Wi-Fi, uh, you know. So that is also possible. That's what is showing down here on the picture. And you've heard about Tesla. Tesla cars, they can do updates while you sleep, they call it, right? They say it. So basically what it means is if, as long as your car is connected to the Wi-Fi home Internet, in the garage, even if the t ignition is turned off and everything, right? The Tesla company or car manufacturer can update your computers on the car like remotely. You know, you don't physically, they don't have to connect anything to your car, a scan tool or anything like that. They can remotely update your cars, put a software and take the software out, whatever not, on the vehicle. So that's what it means by uh, Ethernet, okay? Um, it's like your phone, mobile phone, right? When you're sleeping, your mobile phone is on charge, it's connected to your Wi-Fi, right? And next morning you wake up and you'll see our new Windows, uh, new, sorry, Android is downloaded, new version of uh, security update is downloaded and whatnot, right? So similar things is happening in the automotive as well. So we'll probably see more and more later in the years uh, to come uh, that Ethernet is getting very popular as a networking uh, on the car as well, okay? So that's everything on the networking. So far, we talk about uh, all the way from 1990s, which is your VPW and PWM, to K-Line early 2000. Uh, we talk about the CAN bus, which come out about 2007-8, uh, and they're still using it. 
we talk about Linbus, what it does, we talk about Flexray, we talk about Most, we talk about Ethernet. Okay, last thing on this one is Gateway. Uh, you probably already know what Gateway is, but if you don't know, I'll just um, quickly go through that. So Gateway, basically what it does is managing the data network. And it's kind of like a translator, okay? That's probably not the right language uh, for it, uh, but it's basically is a translator. Um, I'll just quickly show you on the board maybe, okay? Uh, Prasanna says, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Prasanna says first DOIP, diagnostic over IP is used in aircraft. Yeah, most of the automotive stuff is, I think, come from aircraft anyway. So a lot of the time, like the ABS system on the cars is also derived, uh, come from the, you know, a airplane industry, right? So yeah, that's, that's definitely very possible, right? Okay, um, I'll just show you what a gateway is and then we go from there, okay? So gateway usually is a module, it's inside a module. So let's say, in this case, I'm giving you an example of a Holden Cruise, let's say, right? Uh, the newer Holden Cruise, 2010-11 model. Uh, the gateway is actually the BCM, okay, in the BCM. So BCM has its own purpose why the BCM is there. Not only that, it also using um, BCM as a gateway as well. So a car can have multiple different network within, right? Within its um, as network, right? So what I mean by that, so let's say you got a, let's go, say this is your OBD plug, right? Where you connect your scan tool. And then you got a BCM. And then let's say you got an ECU here. Let's say you got ABS. I'm just giving example, okay? Uh, let's say you got an audio module. Uh, you may have a hatchback module, airbag module, whatever not. Multiple, multiple modules, right? So, and we said the BCM is also a gateway, okay, gateway module, right? So what gateway does is manages the, um, the networking. So what I'm saying is, let's say the ECU, ABS, if they talk on CAN bus system, let's say they are on CAN bus network, right? They might come to BCM. Right? Let's say this audio and hatchback is talking to my, uh, you know, talking to each other on, let's say, K-Line network. Okay, they can still use K-Line on the newer vehicle as well. They can have CAN bus and K-Line in one vehicle. They can absolutely use that. They might have a flex ray. Let's say the airbag is working on a different types of network. Let's call it, I don't know, um, flex ray in this case, right? So they can have all this communication wire coming to the BCM. BCM is the gateway. Everything comes to BCM, right? Now, BCM's job is to translate those data, okay? So CAN bus data cannot be, you know, conveyed to flex ray data. Maybe they can't, K line data could not be understood by CAN bus data, but they all need to talk to each other maybe. Right? So what it does is it just translates that data between different networks, you know, if they need to use that information. So if something, a uh, uh, message from the ECU that's coming in on a CAN bus network needs to uh, go to, let's say, audio uh, module, right? But audio is on K-line network the BCM will translate that data so the audio module can understand, basically. That's what gateway module is. Not only that, gateway module can also send the, trans the data to OBD plug, right? That's when you connect your scan tool. You, your scan tool might not be able to understand or read all the different types of network. So BCM will, you know, translate all that data, maybe send it in into one communication line for your scan tool to read, right? 
Sometimes the OBD2 can have multiple different um, protocols that you can talk on, on the scan. So you could have a CAN bus, you could have a K line on same vehicle on the GM, you may have a high speed uh, CAN bus and a low speed CAN bus uh, as well. So they all go to BCM and BCM arranges it and manages it and uh, make it, you know, translate it to other module to understand and whatnot. So that's the basic principle here okay that's not very you know engineering explanation but that's just something easy to understand so that's gateway